you know, that if, if you believe a certain thing, then your prospect, your likelihood of spending eternity in heaven is much greater than if you believe something else. Like, for example, if you don't believe that um, there is a God, then, you know, that puts you at risk. If you don't believe in free will, you know, according to some, that would put you at risk. So that, that probably explains um, to a great extent why people say to themselves, of course I experience free will. You know, they, they, it's like for any, anyone who, who really delves into the question, who explores it, would, would, um, would finally realize otherwise. But I think it, it may be because of this religious tradition that, um, that we haven't explored it as a society, as, as individuals, as, um, as uh, comprehensively as we could. Okay, so let, let's just explore a bit more in detail um, why this idea of free will is, um, is not what we experience. Okay, like for example, let's say I choose... Um, I, I think, you know, um, after these first few tapings, I've got another couple of tapings in the afternoon. I, let's say I choose, I'm choosing to go to the library, you know, and just like browse through some art books. Okay, um, I could also choose to uh, go to a nearby by mall and have a cup of coffee, whatever. But let's say I choose to go to the library. Now, if I were to claim that was a free choice, then I would be claiming that I... I made that choice regardless of the strongest motivation, for example. You know, in other words, like, there's part of me would like to go to the Galleria and have a cup of coffee and just like, you know, hang out with people there. Part of me would like to go, you know, and just browse through uh, some art books. I've been going to the Metropolitan Museum of Art recently. The Egyptian collection has been amazing. <laughs> like, so, you know, I want to just do that. So that what happens is like the decision isn't free from that. It, you know, basically there are two competing motivations. You know, go to the, the mall and have coffee or go to the library and browse through an art book. And so what's going to happen? The stronger of those two motivations is going to win out. Okay? Um, and I, I've already made the decision. You know, I, I, I could change my mind. I could, you know, at the last minute... Um, say, well, you know, I'd really rather be around people, and, you know, there's probably not too many people in the library or whatever. Um, and I could end up going to the, to the mall for coffee. But, even, but then, if I would do that, that would be because then that becomes the strongest motivation. You know, whether it's because, like, I, I really feel the desire for coffee or to be around people or I don't just, you know. And um, so that's the idea. It's like we don't really experience a free will. We experience a will. You know, I experience um, the will, the decision, the volition, you know, to go to the library or to go to the mall or whatever, but it's not free. It's not free of who I am as a person. It's not, I mean, like, again, you know, my, my um, the motivation, why might I have the motivation to, um, to, to go to the library and browse through books. Well, it's because of the kind of person I am. You know, I, I used to be an art major years ago. I, um, I have somewhat of an appreciation of art, you know, and, and so that's what um, determines. You know, and, and a lot of this is like, you know, we don't get to choose. Like, for example, if one is like really good at mathematics or if one is good at art or at music or at whatever, you know, these aren't things we get to choose. You know, we're, we come into this world with, with kind of like a personality. And, you know, in terms of our personality, you know, who we are as people, it's like 50% genetic. And, and naturally, when, if it's 50% genetic, we can see how very clearly that, you know, our genes are not in our control. And the other 50% is environmental. It's due to, to how we were raised, where we were raised, um, how our parents related to us, you know, the kinds of experiences we had in our life. So, again, if, you know, so we, when we make a decision, we're not experiencing, we're not experiencing that that decision was free of all that stuff. You know, we're just experiencing a decision. Okay, we're experiencing, we decide something, and, you know, if, if we took the time 
to, to ask ourselves, well, why did I decide this? Why, you know, what motivated me? What compelled me to decide this as opposed to that? Then, then we would realize that um, the decision wasn't free from these various factors, from the unconscious. And all. I mean, the unconscious we couldn't really, um, you know, see as a reason, experience it because, you know, by definition it, it is unconscious. But even just understanding the concept of causality, you know, in other words, um, to say that we experience free will means that we would experience a will that is free of even causality, of this process of cause and effect. And so then, so then all you have to do is ask yourself, okay, or you just acknowledge to yourself, if I made a decision, there was a reason or a cause for that decision. And there may be one, there may be several. You know, it depends on how you want, want to define cause. Um, and then, then you say to yourself, well, okay, Every event has a cause. We know this from science. You know, nothing happens. We know this from experience. Nothing happens that not, that's not caused. So then if, like, if there's a cause for our decision, then there's a cause for that cause. Okay, and then there's a cause for that cause. Okay, and a cause for that cause. And that's like, you know, we, we, we sometimes um, refer to causality as cause and effect, the chain of cause and effect. And so if we, if we took the time to investigate the, um, the reasons, the causes for, for the decisions we make, we would see that, there's a, that they're caused by, by other causes, by previous causes that always come before you know, the, the event. A cause will never come after the event. So these are always going into the past. And if you have a chain of cause and effect going further and further back into the past, ultimately it's going to go back before we were born even. So that'll tell you... Um, that you know naturally our our decision wasn't free um but but just you know it's 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 the idea that um just understanding causality understanding that everything has a cause and we might we might get to the point where we um we say well you know like for example i i um i decided to go to the library because I've been going to the to the Met and um, have been fascinated by the Egyptian exhibit there. Why? Then I ask myself, well, why have, was I fascinated by the Egyptian exhibit? And I might say, um, because I have some experience in art, you know. And because we're only just guessing, mind you, you know, just these these causes, you know, we're, we're trying to like figure out why we did, did things, and it may be the right cause, it may not, but there there always is a cause. And then ultimately, sometimes we'll get into um, we'll get to the point where, well, I don't know, you know, for example, I don't know why um, the Egyptian art, you know, fascinates me so much. Why 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 I find it so beautiful, so amazing, you know, um, and so that if we don't know, if we don't know what causes us to make the decisions we make, certainly those, we're not experiencing, you know, those decisions as having been free. You know, those, those decisions aren't free. They're actually, you know, caused by whatever it is that we don't know. And, um, and so that's, that's, you know, an understanding of, you know, why, why one, we don't have a free will, and two, you know, we don't even experience having a free will. Okay, so um, so basically, you know, again, the the um, this idea that um, that we quote unquote experience free will, and it's so obvious. Upon you know, just even a cursory exploration, you'll discover that no, we don't experience free will. We experience free will. We experience will, and there's a world of difference between them. Okay, um, so. You know, again, I, I want to go into um, why this is so important. You know, some, someone might say, well, fine, all right, we don't have a free will. But think about it. Think about it. If we don't have a free will, what this means is that every single decision we make is compelled by causes that we're not in control of. Everything we do, 
everything we think, everything that any of us thinks and does, everything that happens, because it just this you know this causality doesn't again relate just to um, human beings. It relates to the entirety of universe. Even like some people say, well, you know, quantum behavior is. Um, is not determined. No, that, that's actually a false interpretation of quantum behavior. Quantum behavior, quantum mechanics, um, behavior at the quantum level, particle behavior, is actually entirely causal. We don't, uh, there's some things going on there that we don't understand. For example, we can't use the standard causality models, the Newtonian physics, to make predictions w um, at the quantum level, so we rely on prob probabilities. But nonetheless, the, the essential nature of of matter is causal, and and you know even even if if let's say again it, it matter is the universe is causal, but even if it wasn't, let's say let's say for example that that um, things you know that some things weren't causal, uh, like our our wills or whatever. I mean, what would that mean? Think about it. That how could something how could anything happen that's not caused? Okay, so that that concept of this randomness that things happen without reason, without cause, it's, it's just simply incoherent. Um, so anyway, so the, the idea is that, you know, we've got this, um, the world is like a movie. We're like actors, you know, and we don't even get to interpret our roles. You know, an actor will generally get to interpret how he, he um, portrays his character and all. Everything, it's, it's, it's amazing. And, and that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm doing this show. I mean, it, it's so bewilderingly amazing that the universe, the causal past, um, co has compelled us, because it hasn't been our choice. It's compelled us to get the very most, the most fundamental aspect of human nature completely wrong. You know, and, and nature, you know, Nature does this in certain ways. Again, like the illusion that, that the world is flat, uh, the illusion that, um, that the sun revolves around the earth rather than the earth revolving around the sun, the illusion that, um, that our world is completely still when we're ha hurtling around the sun um, at 660,000 miles per hour and our whole Milky Way galaxy is, is hurtling through the, the universe. You know, <laughs> so like, so nature, God, whatever you want to call it, likes to apparently have fun with us in that way. And, and this illusion of free will is, is one of these, um, one of these, you know, ways in which we've actually been predetermined to get, you know, the, the fundamental nature of, of the fundamental characteristic of human nature completely wrong. Okay, and um, so yeah, I, I predict that um, there's more and more evidence coming out that, um, that those things we think we decide, you know, with our conscious mind is actually decided at the unconscious level. There's, you know, there's, um, and this is a very, very hot field in psychology right now, in neuroscience. And so, you know, again, the, the premise, the prediction is that as we understand this, we will understand that our f wills are not free. And, and thereby, like, be easier on ourselves, not, not blame ourselves when things go wrong, just have, be more understanding toward others. All right, well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, thanks for watching. In the future, we'll explore other topics, like, related to this, like, question of, of this illusion of free will.